What a game coming in here. Rocket looking as strong as it did actually throughout the entire quarterfinals. Let's break down the picks and bans. Fnatic going for a Nami first pick, putting on so much on that champion, but it was the support trash on the other side that paid out dividends for Rocket. Yeah, it really was. The difference in supports was day and night. The very first ban from Fnatic was also the Elise targeting that at Yankos. And he picks up Kha'Zix in the first round of picks from Rocket, and he just delivers once again. Yankos is far and away the hard carry for Rocket, and until Fnatic figure out how to deal with him and contain him, they're going to have a difficult time. I think most of the picks were fairly standard. We're not too surprised by what was locked in, but just how Rocket played was fantastic. But you've got to think, right at the start, it was Fnatic that got the edge. They got in, got the blue steel in there, it all worked out well for them, but it just it slipped away. And it was all about this early Baron fight. We're about to get to, uh, Dragon fight, sorry. We're about to get to, because simply put, Fnatic were at odds with themselves right from the start. Yeah, that was. They nervous. Yeah, absolutely. That was when they got a small advantage. They actually had positional advantage at Dragon. Let's actually get that up on the screen. In all normal circumstances, they take this down. Yeah, but I think you know, for Fnatic, they had a nice grouping. Let's roll this clip out actually, and take a look at the fact that Soaz is not with the team. So this is a four v three for the time being and you're going to be seeing Yankos coming in from the sidelines. Vander landed so many impressive hooks, and despite Fnatic chaining their CC quite effectively, they just simply did not kill the damage threats. You see Nidalee hanging out in the sidelines, throwing out those spears. Selva, despite going very, very low, does not get taken out. And while all of the focus was on trying to get those two members down, Yankos comes in, cleans house, picks up a couple of kills. Rocket actually rolled back around, picked up the dragon, and from there on out, they did establish control. Yeah, solid, solid start by Rocket. Honestly, coming into this one, vast underdogs, it's safe to say. They finished sixth in the season, way down, below 50% win rate over the season. They seem to be peaking, and everybody, myself included, was saying 3-0. This is a 3-0, no doubt about it. But Rocket, by God, where has this team just come from? And like you said, Jankos, he is leading in first bloods by a long way for a good reason. He knows how to gank and he does it successfully and he just he's just sending smelling yeah. blood throughout the whole game fantastic Kazakhs. yeah absolutely and uh, he helped build his team up a fantastic lead in this game but at one point fanatic they have a lot of damage on their side when expect it gets on someone with that ult they can burst someone down if it wasn't for the zillion ult and that was so essential in this it was a very smart pick fanatic like to play a pick style the zillion composition is going to counter that instant burst meaning syndra is significantly less useful I do also want to call Fnatic's decision-making out. For the second time, we see a base race situation coming up, and Deficio touched on it very briefly towards the end of the game there. Rocket, we're pushing the top lane. Fnatic, uh, uh, Rocket pushing bottom lane, Fnatic pushing top lane. We didn't see the full story of what transpired in the top for Fnatic, but it ended up costing them an inhibitor turret and an inhibitor. It completely stalled any aggressive moves that Fnatic could have made on the map for the next four minutes, and while Rocket sort of meandered over the finish line, that alone secured them control in the mid-game. And it seems to be down to Peke, obviously clearly making the call, like, I've got this, guys, don't worry, I can clear this out. But I don't think he was quite ready for Jankos' aggression. Just leaped in, got straight on him, got the slowdown. He had so much damage at that time. He'd already got the Hex Drinker, the Brutalizer, and I think he was well on his way to the last Whisper in there as well. He got a lot of damage, and I just think it completely caught by surprise. Yeah, that was kind of the story of, uh, of the mid to late game for me, that uh, Fnatic's decision-making maybe was off because of the nerves. I actually have another replay to showcase that. Yeah, I actually agree. Let's pull that second replay up onto your screen. This was really the fight that sealed it for me, that just said, Rocket's going to win this game. Four versus five, four and a half versus five. There's a zillion ultimate that's going to get thrown in there. Let's roll the clip out. Fnatic, they just managed to pick off Saliva in the back line. You can see he's still uh, on the death timer. And even though they try to blow over power up, this is the sort of counterplay that Zillion brings to the team fights. Fnatic cannot get to the back line. Zazas was alone. Jankos manages to leap away to safety. And as Fnatic are forced out of the tunnel, the rest of Rocket just chase them down. Vanda lands another fantastic death sentence. Like many of the fights, he, along with the, uh, uh, the play from Jankos, was the reason they won those fights. Fnatic get punished, four versus five, they lose the fight. Yeah, the, some people say throwing down the gauntlet, he threw down the lantern yeah. in Fnatic's face. And it's something we've said so many times, don't let Vanda get thresh. It's been a while since we saw Vanda life reappear, but he seemed to be on form. And we talked about, obviously, that base race situation. Vanda landed three hooks that included three deaths. Yeah. It's just everything he lands kills. Yeah, I really just think for Fnatic, the biggest thing to, uh, for them to think about 
is what threat do they consider bigger? Because you can't ban Yankos and Vanda out and pick uh, a champion, you know, take away champions from, from Overpower as well. They need to figure out what's going to work for them. The Zillion pick was very smart because it countered Peke, countered the pick style. And there were so many things that Fnatic have to analyze going to game two. And this, this is possibly a problem because they banned out Elise, which is obviously Yankos' main champion. It's what he's been getting all the kills on. He said, fine, I've got another one I'll fall back on and I will get a lot of kills. It's just, for Fnatic, they seem to have a big problem coming into game two. Now we saw it when we were rocking here. NA was rushing backstage. Veggie was rushing backstage to go to their teams and give them uh, the feedback. So what do you guys think in this next game? Is it just going to go like it won in quarterfinals with Rocket? When they have their eye on the ball, well, they go. I mean, at the end of the day, Fnatic are probably the most experienced team in this situation. They know how to adapt to these situations. And as you mentioned, they've got Aranea out the back. He looked like he was ready to spit bullets uh, going to see that team. He was Spanish not happy. <laughs> so. Uh, I think they should be able to adapt. We'll see how it works out. We know we talked about how obviously Rockout completely focused Peke. He got Sindri, he was very happy, he got his champion. But it was an immobile champion and they were a very mobile team. Yeah, but just very briefly, Rockout demonstrated they can beat uh, Fnatic resoundingly. If they get off to a good start, confidence is with them, they should be able to take game two if they get off to a good start. All right, well, we'll see Whew, what a series we have on our hands. We have to step away, but we'll be back in the